Hello, this is Ron Nutter, and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. This time, I'm going to show you how to do the Fire A template as a security monitor, not for $30, but for $25. And that starts now. I thought when I got started with the $30 project that I thought I'd accomplished something because I didn't dream I would find a web camera and yep this is the one we did for thirty dollars and of course now the price has gone back up and that happened just a few days after i did that video so i don't want you to think that i was trying to pull one over here because that was the price i got it for but we've got the next best thing through one of you my viewers i found out about the wise camera now this one is it's a little over $25 and change, and let's go shift over here. That's the camera that I got. You know, $25.98, okay, marketing, we'll call it $25, because depending on what specials are going on, if you got points in your credit card, still, that's, that's not a bad little device. And it's got a lot of settings in it that really uh, make it stand out. And the big thing is it's 1080p. It's got a, as you'll see here, it's got a good little stand to it. You can put it just about anywhere and you can even put it upside down. And I'm going to show you how you can deal with that here in, in just a second. So this is, I, I was impressed. I didn't think 1080 would make that much in resolution and it really did. So we're going to shift over to, I had to do something in the background real quick. I'm going to shift over to my trusty Galaxy S9 Plus, and we'll drop the graphic here for just a second. Now, the way you do the setup on this one, it's this camera is a talker, and that's the best way I can describe it. It literally tells you where it is in the process, and you just match up what it's saying to what the instructions are showing. And I had this up and running in less than five minutes, so it was, I, I was pleasantly surprised. I really was expecting some challenges because how much smarts going to $25 device have? Answer is apparently quite a bit. Now it does only support 2.4 gigahertz, but you know what? For $25, I can be pretty tolerant. To get one that's 5 gigahertz is going to be a little more expensive. And to, at this point, I don't know that it's really worth it. So let's go into the setup. We'll go to the wise camera and let's go back to devices here. Now, this is showing you a real-time view. It's, it's getting into the evening right now. So this is, you know, still showing pretty good uh, video. And anyway, the, the blinds you see right there, it's where it's got, I've got it sitting right between the blinds and the window. So it's going to show a little bit of reflection there. And it, you know, because now we're getting real-time video of it, and I'm surprised that it's it's picking up this good. And there were some storms coming through town today, so that really showed what it could do. Now we'll go into the setup here because there's some things I really want to make sure you see. And this is this is what di definitely distinguishes this one from the crowd. Now we're into alert settings. Now we'll look at this. Okay, motion and sound detection. Okay, this is an outside-facing camera. Neither one of those is probably going to do that much for me. Motion detection, maybe. Of course, every time a car passes or a truck passes. But now here from a safety standpoint, look at these two settings right here. Smoke alarm sound detection and CO2. It says just says CO, but I would say they mean to do CO2. They just didn't get the two in there. That is very handy, especially if you're not at home. And if you have an alarm system that does alert you, this is a, at a minimum a nice backup to have because that's going to tell you if there's a problem. Now we'll go back up here to the main screen. It's going to be just a little bit of a lag here. Well, try tapping it again. I just didn't tap it the right way. We'll go to advanced settings. Now I've got the record sound turned off because this is an outside facing camera. So I don't need to hear the TV echoing off this device because I'm looking at what's outside. So you can turn off the sound there. Now, you notice this one option right here, rotate image 180 degrees. Now, you're going to initially think, and like I did, why would I need that? And here's why. Depending on how you use the mount with that camera, 
and it's got, I mean, you've got a lot of swivel room to it and, and everything else. You may have to mount it upside down. Well, what this does is it lets you flip that image around so it doesn't matter which, you know, if you've got it mounted standing up or, or hanging down. So there's a lot of options there that you're given the power uh, transformer and the cord that hooks into the back for supplying power. Really, it's you should be able to find an outlet that close to be able to power it with where you know, you would normally probably use it. And most times that cord probably is going to be too long, but coil it up, get a, a strip of Velcro, and you can get it tightened right down. So I've got the night vision turned off, and the reason being is where you saw it in the previous screen. I'm already getting reflection off of the glass where you could see the blinds right behind it. I didn't really see the need to... Uh, further reflect the, the night vision LED. So I'm just going to leave that off. Now, local storage, to get this camera to record, it you do have to have a, a micro SD card in it. And what I would strongly suggest you do, depending on how much video you want to replay from it, get at least probably a 16 gig card. I don't know that you need much more than that. It just depends on how much storage you want on the device. But that's that's not a, a big deal in, in the grand scheme of things. And at this point, with the way I'm using it, uh, I may not add a card for a while. Now, device info, this is another one to be aware of what's on that screen. Now, I've got it labeled front yard, and you can always change that. The MAC address is not something you may need a whole lot of unless you're doing network troubleshooting. And this is where that will come in handy because if you have to get in to your wireless router and it's the camera saying, you know, it's having a problem initializing, you can at least look at the MAC address and then compare that to what the router thinks is going on to see if it's got the same information. If it's not seeing the MAC address, then you've got definitely have a, a coverage issue of some type where the wireless router is not seeing the, uh, the camera. It gives you the IP address, so you, it's another piece of matching information that's handy, and installed firmware. When you go through the setup on this one, I've got all the steps in the, the show description or the, the notes for the video. And it literally, you walk it right through. I had this up and running in, well, from the time I plugged it in, it was five minutes. It really, I was not expecting that quick. Of course, I'd learned some lessons from the first camera, but this one was, with it being a talking camera, I found I didn't really have to go through the directions as much. I just plugged it in and, and it just about walked me through it. And no more strange error S18 or watching for the the blinking light in a certain pattern. I mean, this just simply just worked. So it's uh, it's got good vision. I mean, you see the time of day I'm recording this one and it still is picking up uh, quite a bit of light outside and looking at the blinds behind me. I mean, it's obviously getting dark, but it's doing well to still display the image than it can. Now, when you go through to do the Alexa integration, and again, all that is is pretty much, you just matter, you search for the skills, you, you know, search for WISE, you will just look for the one that says WISE Labs. There may be some other ones come up, but I did this with the WISE Labs. Now, after you do that, uh, you'll say, and I'm going to use a different term so I don't trigger some folks' devices. I'll say, Madam A, discover my devices. You could, that's a voice command you can use. You will have to do that for it to know that the camera is there. Now, with you already having named the camera, whether it's front door or side yard or whatever, it's, it's got to be something distinct. But then once you've done this, and then Alexa should tell you, I'm sorry, I went and did it. I was trying to say Madam A. It will tell you that it's discovered a new device. Now, I did a secondary scan just to make sure that there wasn't something else hanging out there, and it said it couldn't find any new devices. So that told me that that I had that in place. And it's just a matter of, you know, with I've got two cameras. I've got front door and front yard. Now, with the Fire 8 tablet, I have noticed something they, well, I'm putting it off to something with the Fire 8 tablet because the, the main Alexa show may not exhibit the same situation. I first told uh, Alexa to show me the front door and then it said, show me the front yard without 
having it hide the front door and then go to the front yard. And it apparently tied up enough memory that the fire tablet just kind of it prematurely closed one of the apps. But that's, you know, that that's a minor thing in the grand schemes because it's what's the likelihood you're going to switch from camera to camera. And it doesn't take that long. It it just simply works. I'm I'm really impressed with, with what I've seen. The the quality of the video, obviously it's now showing me that I'm going to have to trim a, a little bit away from, from the window to have a better field of view. But for, for $25, I mean, this is not a bad camera. They do have another one that is a, a rotating camera. I'm unclear at this point because I haven't been able to get my hands on one. If it if you can turn it with Alexa, and, I, and my initial suspicions is maybe not, but I hope to be able to get one of those in and show you. But this is really, it's very straightforward. I've got an affiliate link uh, in the description for this. You saw the price I paid for it, $25.98. I mean, it, for the size, I mean, it literally is not much, not much smaller in this box, but it's, it's pretty tight. It actually comes in at about, well, if you go from the top of the box to about there, I mean, it's, it's a fairly small cube. The transformer took a little bit of space, but you know, they, they got this down pretty tight in here and it has been, you know, it, it's been through some dark times during the day when a storm's passed through, I've had good results with it. So it's really worth the, uh, worth considering, especially with the other camera having shot up. And I, folks, I feel bad about that one because I didn't dream it would spike that much because it's, and it was not an Amazon prime day deal. But right now, this one seems to be holding pretty stable on its price. I haven't seen a change on it. They do have one that turns and may or may not be a big deal for you. That is a little bit more. The It would be nice if it supported 5 gigahertz. So what I'm trying to do is any of my IoT devices that support 5 gigahertz, I'm moving them to 5 gigahertz so that I can keep this, so I can keep 2.4 clear as much as I can for the two cameras I've got so that there's not any lag time. And I, this one does seem to have a little bit better 2.4 chipset, in it, at least from the time I've had it so far. I've not had some of the lag that I noticed in that one, but the other one wasn't bad. It really could have been the location of the camera, the wireless router that I've got. There, there's several variables in there. But overall, I mean, this is fairly compact. You really can't uh, can't get much better than that. So it, it's definitely worth looking at, especially as a secondary camera, or if you want to get multiples of these. That is, uh, you know, you really can't go wrong. You do have to set up an account on the WISE website or through the app. So again, you're going to hear me preach about this from time to time. Please use a unique password anytime you set up an account for an IoT device or anything for that matter. Because if an account were to be compromised, that's, and as soon as they learn that password, they're going to try other websites and guess what's going to happen? That's going to be the first password that they're going to try. So it's, it's a layer of additional protection for you. So really it takes a few minutes more. It's a little bit of a hassle. Yeah, come up new, new passwords is not my favorite thing, but depending on the password manager you use, and you've heard me talk about M-Secure, and there's other good ones out there too. It's just the one I got into because it was multi-platform and it just had a lot going for it, that it they will have, most of the good ones will have some sort of password generating function in it. So that, that'll take some of the, the hassle out of doing it, although there are ways you can come up with strong passwords and it'd be easy for you to remember, but it not, might not be as easy for someone who's trying to guess things. Well, I've taken enough of your time, but please do consider this camera. Even if you don't use my affiliate link, which if you do, I'll get a small commission. It will help with the cost of the channel and some equipment upgrades that I'm looking at. But if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I'll be spending some of this weekend doing uh, some of the comments that I'm a little behind on, and I appreciate everybody uh, dealing with that. And even some of the videos I've produced several months back, I'm still getting some questions on those. So it's whatever I can do to help you. We've got uh, the the book that I've been working on. That has been out now for about a month. That's volume one. I'm already working on volume two. And it gives you kind of some of the foundation of what to look at, some of the setup of the devices. I've got a whole host of devices, and I've even got one that uh, you saw me talk about. Let's see, do I have the other one handy here? No. Okay. Well, you heard me talk about Rat Trap. 
That is a very good device for outside of your wireless router, between your wireless router and the ISP termination device, whether it's a cable modem or whatever. Does a great job at fending off problems coming from that point. But I'm looking at a device that I should have it online this weekend that will do the same thing and even some additional things that are kind of nice for inside your network. Because not only do you have to protect things from the outside, but you have to protect things from the inside as well. Again, thank you for watching the uh, video. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. And then if you can go ahead and uh, click the notifications button, that way as new videos come out, it should give you an alert when I do have something done. And I'm generally trying to do about two to three videos a week. You'll see me also showing up on Instagram TV and just trying to make it as easy for you to to find things and help you avoid some of the challenges I've run across in setting up my own smart home. Well, I think we've done that all we can for right now. Thank you for your time, and we'll see you in the next video.